Thanks for tuning in. In this module, I'm going to go over a little bit more in detail the cardiac ultrasound conventions that are commonly out there. Um, as per usual, a number of the ultrasound images and videos are courtesy of the Division of Emergency Ultrasound at Massachusetts General Hospital. In my previous tutorial with respect to parasternal long axis um, cardiac imaging, I mentioned that you're going to be pointing the transducer marker either to the patient's right shoulder or to the patient's left hip. Um, and more specifically, if your screen marker is on the right-hand side of the screen, then you're going to point the transducer marker to the patient's right shoulder. If, on the other hand, your screen marker is on the left-hand side of the screen, then what we're going to do then is ask you to point the transducer marker to the patient's left hip. And the rationale for that is that uh, really, for both conventions, what you're doing is you're taking a parasternal long axis through the heart, like so, and then you're going to rotate it around, um, and I think of it as, it's as if you're standing on the patient's left-hand side and looking into the heart, like so. And both of those conventions will generate a very similar image, and um, just by rotating this here a little bit, and this is the image that we are generating, like this. And as I went over the right ventricles here, you've got your left ventricle, and the apex is going to be pointing to this, to the left here, left atrium, um, aortic outflow right here, aortic valve and aorta. Okay, so that's that's kind of the two conventions that I covered in my videos. Now, as it was pointed out to me that um, it uh, that doesn't tell the full story because there's actually another convention that's commonly used out there as well, which I didn't cover in my tutorial. And in that convention, you, what you're going to do is you're going to take a long axis uh, slice of the heart just the same way, except now I'm going to stand on the patient's right hand side and looking into the heart like so. So instead of standing onto the patient's left looking into the heart, I'm actually on the other side of the patient um, and looking into the heart. I'm just going to rotate that, and this is the image that uh, you will generate if you um, use this convention. So here, the image is almost the same as what we had, except it's complete opposite. So you still have your right ventricle at the very top, but you've got your left ventricle on the right-hand side with the apex to pointing towards the right. Your left atrium is going to be here. Your aorta is going to be out here with aortic valve. Um, can't really see it that well here, but... Uh, and catch a glimpse of that mitral valve over here. Okay, so, so that's the other convention um, that you will typically see. Um, and to put these kind of one on top of another, the image is almost identical, except that it's the mirror opposite of the uh, other one. So for this convention, your screen marker is on the uh, left-hand side of the screen, and you're going to put the transducer marker towards the patient's right shoulder in order to obtain this view. Um, and really, either of these approaches are quite reasonable you, to um, this, the, the screen marker, assuming it's on the left-hand side, assuming you don't have time to switch um, uh, your screen marker, then your probe marker can either point to the patient's left hip, in which case you get an image very similar to what you will see in a lot of cardiology textbooks. Alternative, uh, totally acceptable way is to put the probe marker towards the patient's right shoulder, and that way you'll get a complete opposite uh, image confusing enough. Um, how do you decide what you're going to choose, uh, which conventions you're going to choose? Well, one potential factor is what image are you used to seeing and are your trainees used to seeing? Um, you know, if you're used to seeing uh, this image, there may be argument for learning and teaching in this convention. Uh, alternatively, if you're used to interpreting um, in this way it may be easier for one to stick to a certain convention. But again, it's, um, you know, recognizing that it's likely helpful to know both conventions. A second factor I use is who do you typically talk to uh, and communicate a lot with in your, in your institution? If you communicate primarily with cardiologists versus emergency physicians and what conventions are they using? Um, and secondly, you know, are they able to flip their images um, mentally, if you show them something else, uh, is another factor you may want to consider. And the last factor is, um, do, you, do you perform procedures? Uh, and if so, it, 
you know, it may be quite, uh, it may be more intuitive for a certain convention versus another. So here, if you're, if you're, you know, doing a um, pericardial synthesis, for instance, does it make sense where you're standing in relation to the patient? Are you looking from the patient's right-hand side this way, and then you can recognize where your transducer marker is um, and where your needle tip is going to be coming from versus are you going to be standing on the other end um, and where the needle is coming from? So, um, and again, for, for those reasons, it's actually probably helpful to really be able to master both conventions. I won't go into too much more details how we ended up in the in this uh, situation here, um, but I'm going to point you to an excellent article written by Dr. Chris Moore uh, in 2008 that kind of covers both the historical aspects and, and um, these conventions in greater detail, um, and I highly recommend uh, reading this article. Lastly, in terms of, I've only really talked about parasternal long axis, which is the confusing um, convention-wise. Uh, once you have your parasternal long axis, however you did that, um, the good thing is that if you just by rotating, um, sorry, just by rotating uh, 90 degrees in a clockwise manner, you should be able to get your parasternal short axis. In the other two conventions, uh, sorry, the other two images in terms of apical four and um, subcostal, there really are just two common conventions that you do need to know. So parasternal long axis definitely is the confusing one. Um, so this is my take home message. Um, so if you're wanting uh, this type of image where the apex is pointing to the left, then if your screen marker is on the right, then point the transducer marker to the patient's right shoulder. If the screen marker is on the left, then point to the patient's left hip. If on the other hand, you're, you want to acquire an image with the um, apex pointing to the right, then your screen marker is typically on the left and you will be pointing to transducer marker uh, to the patient's right shoulder. Um, again, thanks for tuning in. This is our home website for many of our uh, tutorials, and uh, feel free to check those out. Thanks.